What is going on, Lunatics? Guys, we got news to cover. We're going to get to that. But the first thing that we're going to do is there's some, there's a few people, and I get messages like this all the time, asking me, why is the price not going up? I get people all the time who wonder, like, why is everything just not absolutely exploding? And why is it absolutely not? Well, let me show you uh, a little bit about this market so that we can get some, perhaps, clarity into why we haven't had this exponential type move then we'll move on with some data if you like this type of content make sure you hit the button subscribe button bell to be notified let's go what i'm showing you right now is the total crypto market cap and this is very important if you look and grant here that the previous high in this cycle so far back in march was 2.72 trillion in market cap well, then let's talk about where we are right now, because surely that money is flowing into the market. No, it's not. We're down to two trillion in market cap. And what does that mean broadly? Well, if we come up here and you just grant that we're right here right now, 699, 700 billion dollars has come out of this market. But let's go down to where the uh, where it was earlier just today, 750 billion dollars is what we were down. And then over here we were down over a trillion dollars. And this is not that long. This is this is a very short sort of window. This is March through September. So uh, we've come down enormously from previous high. Now let's consider this. There's Luna Classic at the same time, okay? Um, now, because we had come down and we had already found and ranged into that bottom before, uh, we didn't see it the same way. But when you just kind of zoom here, you can see that this basically is that top that we were talking about and what has come out of this range so far. And you can see right here, we're down about 70%. Well, listen, when you go down from 2.7 trillion down to 2 trillion, you're down significantly. So uh, there's been some, basically in this total market, down bad moments for a lot of people since that last little pump. And that last little pump, I mean, that was the best that we got on a lot of different fronts. Now, does that mean that's the end? No, it does not. Uh, what I told you the other day still applies. If we close above nine, then we're probably gonna have a nice little rip, right? Well, <laughs> instead of closing above nine, we're testing this 76 area again one more time. Uh, and as you can see, we've tested it here. We've tested it here. We've tested here. We've tested here. And now we're back at it one more time. It's the fifth time. Now, does that mean that a breakout is imminent? Well, no, not necessarily. Uh, the market is still just a little bit wonky. Now, the problem is this 200 MA right here, we're going to have to address that coming pretty soon. We have not touched it. And if you go back here and you look, this 200 MA that's just kind of been meandering through here, uh, look how often we touch on it and we haven't in a very long time. Now, that led to a massive fall over here that you can see that was the, the original 2023 all the way down sort of uh, play out. So, um, you know, we're going to have to start dinging off of this one more time just for a test. Now, by the way, that does not mean that the market is set to do that. That just means that if you want a reversal, we're going to have to get above the 200 MA. It's plain and simple. Uh, 200 MA got really hot over here and started to really move. You see that aggressive move right there? And then we've just kind of moved along here, but we haven't. We've just continued to to, to dip and continued to come down. So uh, there's going to have to be a test over here or you will see significant. And look, I've joked with people. I, I've joked with people about we're not coming down here to test, you know, uh, four zeros, five. Again. We're not coming down here to test four zeros, three or something like that, you know. Uh, but I mean, that is always a possibility. Um, is it a, is a likely possibility? No, the broader market, let me go back over here. The broader market has waned. Will it continue to wane? The answer to that is a resounding no. It just, it just can't. So we're going to see a significant move in this market. We're going to see a significant pump coming very, very soon. The U.S. market is about to uh, lower rates. That usually adds and injects liquidity into the market long term. It's great for uh, risk assets. So we're going to get our moment in the sun. But just like Bitcoin, I want to add, this market has been playing out in this 
uh, a, a, this 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 opening sort of cone. And we've touched down here. Uh, we didn't make it all the way up. I, I think we're going to probably do what we did over here, where we touched down, then we came across, and then we found a way to come up into the top of this range here. So that's going to be you know quite a bit of money, about three hundred billion injected into the market. And that's going to lead to a potential for another breakout. So just, you know, if you're nervous right now, it's fair to be nervous. It, it's good. And by the way, uh, Luna Classic did not move in accordance with this broader market. So we do have to address that. That is a, an important thing. If we look at this and we come down here, we're down 30% basically in the market. At one point, we were down 38%. When you come and you look at Luna Classic, we're down about 70% from that same zone up here, 79% uh, from here, 69% from here. But look, when we start to look at some of these other ones, then, you know, what's the darling in the industry? Solana, it's been for a little while. Guess what, it's down 70% at one point, down 75%. So we're not the only one feeling, okay? Uh, let's look at it from the Ethereum standpoint. And Ethereum has an ETF. So what does this look like? Um, it was down at one point, 50% currently down 40%. So there's a lot of stuff in this market that's experiencing this downward momentum. So have a little faith and have a little um, uh, have a little security in knowing that this is just a broad trend. And look, we always talk about uh, weak hands in this market. Well, there are a lot of weak hands. And the Asian market, which predominantly Luna Classic, they are the weakest of the weak hands when it comes down to conviction plays. They're more transactional overall. That doesn't mean that they're not good investors. It means that they're transactional. And that means there's a lot more swing trading, a lot more uh, risk-based trading that happens over here. So uh, we're fine, generally speaking, for the, for the entire market. Just it, it, it's going to take a little while before this thing really starts to cook. Now, I still think we're doing the same move. And as you can see right here, we actually did start that trend. And if you grant here that, you know, perhaps we found a bottom right here and perhaps the market kind of choked us out a little bit, then maybe this is the stair stepping start to another big move. And I do suspect that, you know, overall, we're going to test this right here, 95. Uh, and then we're going to have another test here. And then we are going to break out and we are going to be testing some highs coming very, very soon. It's, we're, we're getting there. The question, we always want to get there. And sometimes we project that we are on our way. But, you know, the reality is the market uh, makers decide when we do or do not pump. And look, we're not market makers. We're not market makers. The market makers, they put millions and millions and millions of dollars into this every single day or take millions and millions and millions out and they coordinate it. So, you know, we'll see what happens. So let's go through some of the news and let's figure out where we fit in. First, um, validators violating chain rules, Terra Luna Classic price slips. Now this is all conversation about Jesus is Lord 2. Jesus is Lord 2, of course, is a validator, secondary validator to Jesus is Lord, the first one. And a proposal has been submitted that maybe they should be, um, uh, new in in some fashion because they are that this is a harmful long community members agree that this behavior sets a harmful precedent while some argue that the rules regarding second validator doesn't explicitly exist instead of immediate punitive action and, and here's the thing happy katie crypto another validator with high voting power noted that the chain subject to significant amount of abuse he revealed that community member rex yz operates three nodes one for each division of his project so there's no law or rule against it so uh, this is not a situation in which there is a specific problem against um jesus is lord too the the reason that i've told you uh to not delegate with him is because he doesn't vote the way i would want my vote cast which is why i don't delegate with him uh the fact that he has two of them um, I don't like it, but so rule again. And again, it, it you're a hypocrite, in my opinion. You're a hypocrite if you're complaining about Jesus is Lord 2 or Rex YZ. And you're not doing anything about all nodes. I mean, shouldn't that be the place that we start? Because they're the ones that are not only validating with the largest validator set, but they're the ones that are leasing to other validators, which means they have an exorbitant amount of control. And again, if your answer to that is, well, I mean, that's just what we got to do. Uh, no, it isn't. As a matter of fact, no, it isn't. So, um, and who how, who out here has a deal with all nodes where they get a discount as long as they vote in the same fashion that all nodes votes? Do you see what I'm saying? Um, we don't know that. 
We don't know if there is anybody, and certainly they're not going to talk about it. But um, I, I would assume that something exists right there. So when you're looking at bad actors in the space, um, why don't we start at the top and stop trying to uh, attack the people at the bottom? Again, don't delegate with people if they don't vote the way that you want. That's all. Um, and if they have multiple validators, then you know that I, that you you can consider that that might represent a problem for you. But you know, until there's an actual rule or a law in place, there's not much that you can do about it. So let's move on. That leads us to proposal to address the violation of the Damn it Commission, Damn it Dynamic Commission. Uh, mechanism by validator Jesus is Lord too, and that's Bull Boss Five. He's he's done quite a few of these so far, uh, and it continues to be updated uh, so that they're trying to, um, and he's trying to find a way uh, to to based on this new rule governance finds Jesus is Lord in direct violation. Now, now this is based on this new rule, and this is establishing a rule: no validator should attempt to bypass or circumvent the Dynecom. Uh, such practices are considered a violation of governance, as this me mechanism was voted into place by the community. So in in his uh, in, in right. Here, it's the Terra Classic community introduced the Dynecom rule uh, 11738 to promote decentralization and prevent the concentration of power within the network. First of all, all nodes, uh, this rule adjusts the commission rate dynamically based on the validator's voting power, increasing the rate as VP grows to ensure a more decentralized distribution among validators without restricting delegator freedom. While this mechanism has successfully shifted VP from larger to smaller values, also exposed a loophole in the current code. Now, n there's no loophole, by the way. Um, the, there, there's no loophole. There's just that somebody took advantage of the lack of ruling in this situation. We propose that governance use its legislative and judicial power. And by the way, when you're saying, well, I think that uh, I, I think that the spirit of it is what we're talking about. No, it's not. What we're talking about is increasing the voting power uh, for um, smaller validators, which it accomplishes. So, um, and for this rule to be effective, it must be enforced. Well, that's so that that's there's nothing about that rule that says that all of this is part of the so it is complicated here um and we're going to have a we're, at some point we're going to have a governance vote on all of this stuff but uh, you know uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there now uh, also increased test net we are currently only five validators participating in the current test net so far they've been doing this at their own expense and for some time now only five of them have been doing so without any interest from any of the remaining 95 val validators in participating in the test net to make this more attractive this proposal attempts to create and run five more nodes at the expense of the community pool. If you can imagine taking an active part in the test net, please let us know in the comments. So in the event that you want to, there's five more validators looking to be added into test net. Now, of course, all validators probably should have at least a hand in it so that they know because all validators are voting out on this. So it's kind of nonsense for validators to not be involved, but also decide what's good and what's bad based on the wording and not what What's happening on that test net so you know um but again there, there is an expense involved so um that's also uh, up for discussion and consideration right now so um moving on here though uh as far as the the meme coins go the boys is down 42 percent but let's make no mistake about it the boys was cooking um i have 50 dollars worth of boys tokens it's worth now almost 150 so this thing has been just dynamic last little while um uh, this is a, a a break back down to to the downside but make no mistake the boys uh token has been cooking hard also no governance proposals up right now uh volume still in that really low range um uh, same thing over here for for USTC down to 4.9 million. I mean these are these are very low numbers when it comes to volume. So um, Houston, we have a problem, and that problem is the entire market volume is just continuing to precipitously decline. Right now, we've kind of joined meme coin territory, and I know some people are offended by that, but there is a reality to it that you may not like. And by the way, it doesn't mean it's necessarily meme coin, but uh, we're, we're in that range where somebody's, you know, the, the market's going to have to have a blow off top for the money to really start to cascade down uh, to, to start to, to see, you know, some kind of uh, incredible pump. And then, of course, you know, you get the wind behind your sails, if you will, um, and we continue to reduce the circulating supply. All the pieces fall into place. When all these pieces start to fall into place, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see some kind of... Um, guys, we're in accumulation phase and cryptonomy.finance is the place for you to go in order to stake. You guys have seen what I've 
stake so far. So what I'm going to do is I have 10,000 XRP, six months. Again, wondering what the bull phrase is going to look like. 32% yield off of that. So off of 10,000 XRP, I should have 13,246 XRP when I'm done minus fees. Boom. We're ready for the bull run. We're going 20,000 into the bronze level. All right, we got $20,000 into this pool. We're in the bronze pool right now. You can see the details of what I've done so far, uh, how much I've earned off of it. Uh, my earnings have been just exponential. Why have they been exponential, you might ask yourself? Well, these guys are investing into each one of these launches and look at some of the results that they're getting. They're ch they're picking and choosing the best launches. ZK Sync, four and a half X, uh, Ethora Fund, three and a half x sharp psi 3.5 x coin pays 4.7 x the, they're looking for real solid projects to invest in and then they're getting this big yield out of it so if you want to sign up at cryptonomy.finance today and remember this bull run is coming don't miss out we'll talk to you again very soon incredible move but again it's going to take a little time now as far as everything else goes, 1.2 billion Luna Classic were burned by Binance. Everybody's super excited about that. You can see 2.4 billion have been burned in the last seven days. As a matter of fact, if I should point out here, uh, do you know about the my Binance Mystery Burner? And let's proceed over here and let's see what Happy Caddy Crypto says. Uh, Mystery Lunk Burn Wallet Strikes Again. Somebody is burning a lot of Luna Classic. Uh, voluntarily, it would appear 2.47 billion has been burned over the last uh, seven days. It's a significant supply. Remember, um, they just burned, Binance just burned 1.2 billion, but another person had burned some more. Otherwise, we would see 200 million or something like that, which is what we normally see after the beginning of the month. But we saw one big burn of a billion uh, earlier this past month, and then we saw one more at the end of the month. So there's something significant going on here. Now, the next question, and maybe just maybe this could be old T wallets or something like that. You know, we really don't know yet at this point. Maybe they're just preparing and moving some stuff over. We'll figure it out as we go. All right. Uh, but while we're at it, Rocket major announcement. Uh, proud to finally be able to announce the official Rocket launch date. Thanks for the upcoming tier report 3.1 update. Rocket will be launched using concentrated liquidity V3 pools, uh, enjoying almost zero spread and only 0.3% fees. That's the reason for the delay, but I think it was worth it because it's an absolute game changer both for the token and for game dynamics, which will be unveiled soon. So uh, airdrop clipping and Rocket pool opening on September 3rd, 2024. I'll keep you guys posted. If you did with me while you were over on Terraport and you were in the earn category and you were earning from the launch pad rocket tokens. Remember, we've done, uh, we did a whole bunch of this and we got 3,898 points. I don't know what that adds up to, but you know, uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, total members eligible 2,135 so far. So uh, interesting times, but if you're looking to trade meme coins, remember this is the place to go. Transaction volume in the last 30 days, 520. 3,000 total liquidity 563,000 so significant amounts being traded not as huge as some of the other months remember this is a this is a, a you know you have to go find out where things are um, this is a, a you know complete the market is complicated so um, uh, don't forget by the way if you are looking for some risk-based gaming, you got to come check out Terra Casino. Terra Casino is the place to be. They are a sponsor of the channel. So is TerraPort.Finance. So uh, Luna Classic, Luna, BNB, BUSD, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Dogecoin, USDT, USE, um, Polygon, Matic, Litecoin. You have a whole bunch of different options over here. And there is a group of people out here just constantly playing and earning. And somebody is out here wagering big bucks. Katrina is out here wagering wagering big bucks right now uh, at $10 every play, trying to score big, I would say. Uh, so if you haven't already, certainly go check each one of those out. There's a link in the description down below. And guys, the infighting, there's always going to be infighting. So when I say that there's infighting uh, amongst Luna Classic, it's nothing to be concerned about. Uh, it's not going to uh, wreck the project, if you will. If a validator decides to leave, another validator will step in. Now, um, if you're worried about the concentration of power, then that's fair. But this is a vote for everybody, not just for you. This is a vote for uh, all people. And look, um, let me let me point this out. I'm going to close this at, with, with this, and some of you are not going to like it, okay? Um, everybody is desiring decentralization. Everybody's looking for 
as decentralized a platform as possible because it's better overall for a project to have less points of failure. That's what decentralization is all about. The problem with that is a lot simpler than that. this decentralized project is one of the top 200 cryptos in all of crypto and it has no website because it's decentralized which means that if i wanted to investigate and try to figure out anything about luna classic i cannot do that i can't do that because there's nowhere for me to go but the same people want people to find and discover luna classic but nobody can you see what i mean it's very simple here until we come together as a collective and start to build and start to let the communities know and remember by the way Terra and Luna, they had a website. Everybody has a website except Terra Luna Classic. Think that through. Just think about that for just a moment and then figure out why, why do people think that's good? There's no answer for that. So um, we really have to get our stuff together over the next few months. The bull, the bull run's not here. We have to get our stuff together to really start to shine. Um, if we don't, then, you know, this is difficult. It's a difficult process. But uh, I will say this, I, I do think I'm standing by my three cent predictions, but 2.8 cents uh, prediction for this bull run. So we are going to go on a significant and incredible run. Make no mistake about it. It's just a matter of right now, how high could it go? And that's what we need to figure. So anyway, thank you so much for your time. I apologize for being wordy today. I'm real passionate about stuff right now. So uh, we'll talk again soon. It's not financial advice, but I'm always right.